Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on gender roles and relationships, focusing on domestic labour. When researching gender roles and relationships in the family, sociological approaches have often focused on the role of males and females in the household and the extent to which conjugal roles are divided in the household. More traditional views such as functionalism see the family as being divided based upon biological traits, with the expectation that males take on an instrumental role of providing for the family whilst women are expected to take on the more expressive role of looking after the home and the family. This is typified in Parsons' sex role theory that suggests that domestic labour, housework and childcare, falls into the domain of women as they have more caring and nurturing character traits gained through their socialisation. Other sociologists would disagree and suggest that domestic labour is a form of oppression for women and look to explain how women are exploited within the family through their domestic labour. But why do sociologists focus on domestic labour? Well, domestic labour is often unpaid and constitutes a large part of the daily duties of both partners and the family. Estimates from the Office of National Statistics in 2016 valued the unpaid labour performed by both males and females at home at being worth over £1 trillion a year, £700 billion of which is performed by women. That is, if people were to be paid to do those jobs outside of the home, it would be worth £1 trillion. Other surveys have suggested that women, individually, will provide between £25,000 and £35,000 worth of unpaid labour in the home each year. For Marxist feminists, this amount of unpaid la domestic labour serves the needs of capitalism as it allows family finances not to be spent on domestic labour, but instead on increasing a family's consumption of goods and services, which increases the profit margins of the ruling classes. Women are being exploited not only by their partners, but by capitalism itself. The Office for National Statistics conducted research in 2015 to judge the amount of unpaid labour that was being conducted by males and females in the household, categorising the forms of labour into different categories. Whilst males conducted significantly more transport-related activities, such as dropping off children at school or friends' homes, women outperformed their male partners in all other categories. Despite recent trends for males being more involved in cooking and childcare, it was found that females still did the vast majority of this work. This highlights that the gender inequalities that existed 50 or 60 years ago may not have disappeared, despite men doing more. On average, the Office for National Statistics found males doing 16 hours of unpaid labour to their partners who did 26 hours. However, as with most statistics, it's worth looking in more depth to understand the reasons for this inequality. According to the most recent UK Labour Force survey, three out of every four mothers are in employment in the UK compared to 92.6% of fathers, which may account for a small portion of the differences in unpaid labour between males and females, with fathers being more likely to be working than mothers. Other data from the Labour Force survey suggests that fathers are more likely to be employed than other males who have no dependent children, something that reinforces the idea that males take on the instrumental role. However, the same survey also found that women who had dependent children were more likely to be employed than women without dependent children, something that would support the idea of an increase in dual earner families and the idea of women having a dual burden and a triple shift. So given that women are increasingly likely to be employed, why are they doing more than males? One explanation of this is the gender pay gap. When families decide on reducing their working hours to fit in with their families, it is usually the female that will reduce her hours as males earn more. The UK Labour Force found that part-time work for women was generally higher paid than part-time work for males, which could also be a deciding factor in the decision to reduce hours. According to the Labour Force survey in 2019, 3 out of 10 women reduced their working hours for childcare provision, compared to just 1 in 20 males. However, critics would suggest that this does not explain why couples with both partners working full-time are still unequal in the amount of unpaid labour that occurs in the household. To explain this, we need to apply some of our knowledge of feminist research into housework in the home to this phenomenon. Research into housework and the domestic division of labour has been greatly enhanced by the growth of feminism, and in this series we've already looked in more detail at the works of Oakley and Delphi and Leonard, and we can apply their ideas to inequality in domestic labour. 
Oakley suggested that there existed a dual burden for women of paid labour and domestic labour when she researched the conventional family. While Delphi and Leonard suggested that social expectations of women were to blame for women doing more, with the domestic sphere being stereotypically seen as being a reflection of a woman's competence in the home, and that this served the needs of men and was a source of oppression for women. These views, however, can be criticised based upon the social location of different groups of males and females. While younger generations are more equal in their domestic labour, older generations conform to more traditional roles. Likewise, cultural variations based upon ethnicity, such as Indian families where motherhood is awarded higher status and greater pride taken in fulfilling the expressive role. Social class also has an impact, with many middle class mothers outsourcing domestic labour, something which has been debated recently amongst academics, with some claiming that having domestic help is a form of empowerment that enables them to work, while others suggest it is a form of social class oppression. Delphi and Leonard suggested that social expectations of males doing labour have not changed. Males who do housework or look after children are seen as helping out and are often lauded for their efforts, rather than assuming these roles as part of their normal responsibilities. Khan and Laurie recently suggested that education impacts on the level of equality in households, with more educated women, those with degrees and above, often having more equality in domestic work with their partners. Crompton and Lynette went further and suggested that the level of income women bring into the household indicated the level of domestic work that their partners carried out. The larger the share of income they brought into the household, the more their partner did in unpaid labour. This is in contrast to Morris's research into households that suggested unemployed males did less than their employed partners. The partners did not want to challenge the masculinity of the unemployed male further by asking them to do housework, as their self-esteem had already been hit by losing their status as a provider. That concludes this Tutor to You sociology topic video on gender roles and relationships, examining domestic labour. Thanks for watching.